the Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Uh, the first order of uh, business is invocation by our county manager, Ms. Sharon Griffin. Thank you and good morning, Chairman Bright and Commissioners. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you and conduct the business of Onslow County. Lord, be with the commissioners in their deliberations and bless them with wisdom and guidance as they address the items on today's agenda. Bless our citizens, first responders, and those defending our nation. May all we do this day bring you honor and glory. Now with deep respect and reverence for the faiths, beliefs, and traditions of those gathered here today, join me in a moment of silence. Amen. And Warren will lead us in that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome uh, our elected officials here today, uh, Sheriff Miller, Sheriff of, of Oslo County. Uh, Ms. Omega Jarman, uh, Register of Deeds, and I'd also like to recognize uh, Dr. Penny Burlingame Deal. She's CEO of Onslow Memorial Hospital. Thank you for being here. We ask uh, all in attendance to please set your cell phones to silent or vibrate mode. The board offers the public one opportunity to speak during the meeting. Comments should be limited to no more than five minutes and may be on any issue upon which the Board of Commissioners has control. In accordance with the board's adopted rules of procedure, uh, commissioners shall reserve responses, if any, for the commissioner's comment period on the agenda, which is at the end of the meeting. I will now ask for a Mr. motion to adopt the agenda. Mr. Chairman, motion to amend the agenda to add item 5HH, -H, Airport Improvement Program, AIP Grant 47. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion, motion to approve carries. the agenda as amended. Second. Uh, I have a motion to amend the, uh, uh, approve the amend amended agenda. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, we are at the public comment section. I will ask uh, County Manager, Ms. Griffin, consent to- Consent agenda, Jack. Get the consent agenda. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, the consent agenda, any items on the consent agenda that any commissioner would like to have removed? Hearing none, all in, uh, need a motion to adopt. So move. Approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of uh, the consent agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Now we're at public comment. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman and, and Commissioners. We do have um, one speaker who has signed up today to talk during our public comment period. I would uh, remind the public that speakers have exactly five minutes to address the board as a whole dur during our public comment period. Um, I call up speakers in the order in which they sign up to speak. As you approach the podium, please repeat your name and your address so that we make sure we have that correct. Also, we ask that you remain civil, both in your presentation and in your language, and that you do not address your comments to any one commissioner, but rather to the board as a whole. At this time, I will open the public comment period and call forward our one speaker, Ms. Jennifer Vanek of 1033 Brothers Trail and Sneeds Ferry. Jennifer Vanek, 103 Three Brothers Trail, Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina. Good. I was not expecting it to be this fast that I would be up here, so now I'm nervous because I was expecting time to kind of wind down. But good morning. As I stated, my name is Jennifer Vanek. I am a small business owner in Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina. I've lived in the county, though, for the last 11 years. I was hoping to talk with you briefly to discuss some concerns that I have for events that take place, or rather don't take place, in our community. At the present time, most of all of the events hosted through our county by Onslow County Parks and Rec are catered around a singular location with the expectation of a few, but most of still which are all in the Jacksonville area. I know we're all aware that Onslow County is much more than just local to Jacksonville, so I'm 
as one of the outliners that live in the county, I just, I tend to notice that places like Richland, Sneeds Ferry, things like that kind of get skipped over when it comes to hosting events for families, things like that. Over the past six months, I've partnered voluntarily with Parks and Rec to ensure that events were being held at Stump Sound Park in Sneeds Ferry. These events were organized, planned, and brought to the attention of the department by myself. Had I not volunteered and executed these events at Stump Sound Park, we would not have had any hosted events or community events in Sneeds Ferry this year by our county. My partnership still required monetary needs to be met by myself, not including the time and efforts that I had already provided to host these events. Meanwhile, nearly every weekend, Onslow Pines continues to host multiple events that are hosted by the county with county funds. Until this morning, no events are actually on the calendar to be hosted at Stump Sound Park unless it has been planned and paid for by myself. Our close proximity to the beach and our overgrowing community provides plenty of tourism as well as athletic fees. So the, money that's, so the money seems to be there, just not used fairly. Right now, many people that live in Sneeds Ferry tend to go to outside of our county to Surf City or Hampstead to take advantage of their events that they host. This taking money away from our county and putting it into their events that they are willing to host. I'm, all I'm asking for is a fair allocation of funds for the entire community so that parks and rec budget can be reached by more families throughout the county instead of just local to Onslow, Onslow Pines. I thought that was gonna take me much longer. <laughs> that's all I have. Thank you so much, Ms. Vanek. We appreciate that. And that's all we have today for public comment. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, we have several public hearings and we'll start off with uh, uh, rezoning and I'll turn that over to the county manager to conduct that pan, uh, public hearing. Thank you so much. We do have three public hearings this morning related to planning and zoning. The first is PREZ 2022-00006, a public hearing on Harbor Watch rezoning. And I will turn this over now to Jesse Rue, our Planning and Development Director for the staff background and recommendation. Thank you so much. Yes, we do have three rezoning requests this morning. I will jump right into this. Our first request is uh, rezoning request number six. This is a request to go from rural agriculture to residential 15 zoning. Our applicant for this case is D.R. Horton on behalf of BHR Land Holdings and BNC Land Farming, who are the owners. This is comprised of two large parcels on the south side of North Carolina Highway 172. It also borders Winery Road. And this is a rather large request coming in at 386.56 acres. This is property that has been forested. We always walk through and look at what utilities are available, although this is not necessarily always related to a rezoning consideration because these are evaluated when we go through our technical review committee, when we go through our subdivision process. Because this request is to go to R15, it is highly likely that uh, residential zoning is what would, would happen with this at 15,000 uh, square feet per lot. We do have on Wassa water and on our Pleura sewer available in this area. Fire service in this location would be provided by Turkey Creek. And the closest traffic counts we have were about 3,000 feet away in this, in this case from 2020. And we do know that traffic has increased since those numbers were taken. This is our current zoning map. You can see these large two parcels with Highway 172 at the top of your screen. The request, of course, again, is to go to R15 zoning. You will see there is a great amount of R15 zoning in this area already uh, to the right of your screen to the east. We also have higher density zoning to the south of R10 and R15 in this area. This is currently zoned rural agriculture. I'll remind you that's 20,000 square foot lots. If you were to subdivide it, the request is to go to R15, which is a residential zoning district we consider to be medium density at 15,000 square feet per, per lot. We look at our land use plan to consult that when we're making rezoning decisions. This has split categories in our land use map. We have medium density residential 
and we have community growth area. Both of those support R15 zoning. We also look at our Sneeds Ferry Community Plan, which has this in a traditional neighborhood classification, which also does support this request. And you'll see on the screen now those two land use classifications, which come from our future land use map and our land use plan. We look at reasonableness and public interest. This was found to be by the planning board reasonable and in the public interest because it is supported by five different policies in our plan. We also consider that there was already residential zoning of the same exact classification adjacent to this property. The planning board has evaluated zoning changes on this piece of property for several months. This actually goes back to March. Initially, a much higher density was requested in this area. They had requested R5, R10, and R15. R5 and R10 are, allow much more density than the R15 zoning that was eventually recommended to you by the planning board. They changed the proposal several times. When it came in at R15, the planning board discussed this for a fourth time and did unanimously recommend the R15 zoning for this area at their meeting on July 7th. At that meeting, there were no comments against this rezoning. At two meetings prior to that, where there was R5 and R10 zoning proposed, there were some concerns about that density. This is an aerial view of the property up for consideration for rezoning, and that is the end of staff comments. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rue. At this time, I will open the public hearing for PREZ 2022-0006, Harbor Watch rezoning. We have one speaker that has signed up to speak at the public hearing, and I would now call uh, for a five-minute comment period in Flannery of 131 Racine Drive, Wilmington, North Carolina. Hey, good morning. Ian Flannery, 131 Racine Drive, Wilmington. Um, I represent DR Horton as the developer of this project. Um, and really, I'm just here to answer any additional questions you folks may have. Thank you so much, Mr. Flannery. If you want to take a seat beside Ms. Rue, we'll let the commissioners consider this in just a moment. They may have questions and call you back to the podium. Um, I would also open this to the audience for one call if there's anyone who would like to speak specifically on the Harbor Watch rezoning. You have to come to the podium, I'm sorry. That's okay. Do we know how many houses that's gonna be in the, um, in the neighborhood? Because I know that there's already concerns with the middle school overcrowding. So that was just one of the things that was Thank brought to my attention. Thank you, Ms. Vanek? Yeah. I was just gonna say, if you could state your name and address, Sorry. I know you did earlier. Jennifer Vanek, 103, Three Brothers Trail, Sneeds Ferry. Okay, perfect. And we will, we will allow the developer to answer that in just a moment, or Ms. Rue. Um, at this time, I will close the public hearing and it is now available for the commissioners for consideration and discussion. If you'd like to call um, the representative from DR Horton back to the podium or Ms. Rue to answer the question. Motion to approve. Second. <clears throat> okay, discussion. I appreciate the applicant's uh, willingness to concede and, and change their, their application to meet the needs of the community. I would agree with that. Going to R15 makes it a lot easier. Uh, it, bigger lots from the R5 or the R10. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or any questions from the applicant or Ms. Rue? Just um, looking at that, I think people, when they see the R15, they jump right at more, more residential homes. Um, but I think some may want more clarification. It's in there of the, the big differences between RA and then R15 is I think they don't realize that even in RA, you can go in there and put homes on 20,000 square foot lots. And R15 is where they can add some multifamily homes, which I guess would be townhomes or something of that nature. And you can basically add one extra home to a acre of land. Um, so the concerns I've had calls on has been 
um, the infrastructure in Sneeds Ferry and the potential um, issues with the schools, issues with the, uh, with the sewer and water, so forth and so on. Is there any clarification that you can give to some of those residents of the impact from RA to R15? I'm absolutely happy to do that. So in RA, we allow 20,000 square foot lots. You may still come in and create a subdivision, but you're not going to have much flexibility. You're going to have to build the roads and still, uh, uh, you get actually less of a review because you are allowed to just subdivide into the 20,000 square foot lots. If you go to R15, um, that allows you to use something called a plan residential development, which is a tool we have to create subdivisions. If you elect to do that, you kick in our subdivision ordinance, and you also are gonna kick in a major site plan, which is going to go through a very intense technical review where it is evaluated by the schools, the applicable utility companies, the fire station that applies to this area, uh, North Carolina Department of Transportation, especially in this case, since we are um, on a state highway. And all of those things are reviewed. There's about 32 different agencies. Um, we were going virtually. We are back to, to reviewing these proposals in person now, and they are allowed to comment. The school system is also included in this and has provided us with a formula, which we've all seen presented several times, and our staff has actually started using to take, okay, we have this amount of acreage. This could reasonably, and you'll notice we've started including that in your staff report, impact uh, this volume of students. Of course, in our community, that adds more elementary school students typically because we have a lot of young families due to the military base and slightly less middle schoolers and high schoolers. So that always is reflected for you as well. And that data is included and sent to the school system even if they do not come and attend in person. I think one other thing that's important is that you can't just take the volume of acreage and divide it by 15,000 square foot lots because it's very easy to just assume, okay, we're going to do that. There are so many more things that get looked at when you kick in a subdivision ordinance and that is by design. In addition to that, of course, any development over an acre is going to the state of North Carolina to be looked at for environmental concerns and stormwater. So in addition to Onslow County standards on buffering and streets and drainage and open space and amenities that you are required to have when you create a subdivision in Onslow County, those other requirements kick in and we can't even really proceed until the state has done their part and said this is how we're going to control this stormwater. This is how we're going to make sure that there's an appropriate amount of open space and in some cases such as this, if there's blue line streams, we also have a little bit more scrutiny um, on those environmental impacts. Mm -hmm. So we take that formula, we use our division, knowing approximately how much open space needs to be there, how much space goes onto the streets, how much space uh, is required for those bufferings around, which in a situation like this, residential to residential doesn't create a large buffer, but when we look to the west, at some, that's RA right now, if that was to be business or residential, that changes all, I'm sorry, all of your buffering requirements. I can talk about land use all day, I'm just getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I believe that the volume of students was reported in there to be um, potentially about 400 based on that system. And those are about half elementary school students and a quarter middle school and a quarter high school students. So that, that has been looked at, although not as strongly as when, let's say, a subdivision major site plan gets submitted and it kicks in that review by those 32 agencies and, of course, our staff. Fantastic. That's, I appreciate that. I thought that you would be much more articulate in sharing all that information in a more concise manner that actually there's more restrictions on an R15 than an RA, so it's actually more of a protection, for lack of a better term, for the residents that already exist in that area. So thank you very much for that. That's what I want you to share that You're much welcome. better than what I can. So <laughs> yeah, the other thing, I have a question too, Jack. Jess, we have a lot more protection for the home owners now because of, we have some developments in Onslow County that, that can't be fixed. Roads can't be fixed and stuff. We have more rules and regulations under our planning side of the house to make sure that doesn't happen anymore because we have, what, several subdivisions in Onslow County that the roads can't be fixed and the people are sitting there 
can't even sell their homes. That is absolutely correct. <clears throat> when we redid our subdivision ordinance in 2020, we really paid attention to what we could be doing to provide assurance that our community was gonna grow sustainably. And one of those items that was addressed in there was making sure that these streets were turned over. Of course, being in the state of North Carolina, the counties do not control roads, so they either have to be privately maintained roads, which we have safeguards for in private communities now, which are relatively difficult to meet, or they need to meet those NCDOT standards, and when you meet a certain threshold, the road is required to be turned over to the state for maintenance. We do, unfortunately, have several communities um, in Onslow County which were developed prior to zoning and prior to subdivision regulations which did not have that assurance, and we wanted to make sure that moving forward that never happened again. Thanks, Jess. So there was a, uh, on uh, the R15 zoning, there's always a ceiling for the number of homes, but with the storm water and environmental issues, they may not be, uh, they may be a lot less than what would be approved in a R15. So to answer this lady's question, we know what the ceiling could be, but we don't know what it can be after all the agencies uh, get involved in the uh, stormwater and the uh, environmental issues. That's correct. So at an absolute maximum, you could take uh, the 386 acres and divide it by 15,000 square feet. But like I said earlier, that is not cut and dry black and white math because of the many, many other requirements the state has and our subdivision ordinance has. Does that help you uh, answer your question? Okay, any further? Thank you for your knowledge. You're welcome. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. We will now move on to the next rezoning. Our next <laughs> rezoning is for PREZ 2022 dash zero 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 nine it is the ray rezoning and again i'll turn it over to miss rue thank you uh, this is a little bit different from the last one we just reviewed this is a request to go from r10 zoning to r a zoning this request uh, was submitted by the owner matthew ray for one parcel this is out in the rain tree area and the parcel is 29.79 acres Right now, this is just undeveloped land out in this area. Scientific Water and Sewerage um, Company could provide the utilities. It's in the Half Moon Fire District. And in this area, there is no traffic data to look at. You can see this large parcel uh, sits adjacent to the rain tree area here. You can actually access it from three different streets. It is adjacent to a, a large volume of property that's already zoned RA. So this would go from the ability to subdivide this into approximately 10,000 square foot lots. That's a moderate to higher density residential district it's at right now. And the request is to, to down zone it to RA, which again is 20,000 square foot lots. The future land use categories are medium density and conservation. Both would support this down zoning. We can see that here. We also have the river to the left of your screen. This was found to be reasonable in the public and in the public <coughs> interest because it is adjacent to properties already zoned RA and is also um, a down zoning in a planning perspective. The planning board did unanimously recommend you adopt this rezoning request on July 7th. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rue. At this time, I'll open the public hearing, and we do have one citizen who has signed up to speak. It is our applicant, Matt Ray of 1212, or excuse me, 212 Bishop Gate Lane. If you'd like to approach the podium, Mr. Ray. Matt Ray, 212 Bishop's Gate, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Just wanted to say thank you. Uh, the reason for the down zoning is normally I'm up here going the other way, but I'm, I'm actually going down this time just to uh, do a gentleman's farm out there. And uh, I'm here today to answer any questions or provide any feedback that's needed. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
I'll make one call to the audience. If anybody wants to speak on the Ray rezoning. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. It is now available for consideration by the board. Motion to approve. Second. second. A motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, uh, item C. We have one final rezoning matter, PREZ 2022-00010, the Bryan rezoning, and I'll turn it over to Ms. Rue. Thank you again. This request is to go from RA to residential 10. Our applicant is Garden Street Community Southeast on behalf of the property owners, Willie and Ann Bryan, for two parcels. This is on the west side of Richlands Highway, uh, right near our new elementary school Clearview. This property totals 58.94 acres. Right now, this is used as farmland. We do, down this stretch of the highway, have Onwasa water lines and Onwasa sewer available to service the area. This property is serviced by Rhodestown Fire and our highway counts are below capacity in this general vicinity. Here is our current zoning map. The hatched area, you can see that is still zoned RA, although this has been transitioning residential. We have R10 zoning, which is the request to go to here to the north and south of this area, and also R15 zoning to slightly to the north of it. And the conditional rezoning you see on the screen here is the school, which we rezoned in 2019. Currently, we are at RA. To reiterate, the request is to go to R10, which is a very similar zoning district to what we just discussed earlier with the R15. It's just slightly smaller lots. Uh, this would be developed the same way and go through that same, same subdivision process that I just described earlier. Our comprehensive plan does show this at medium density residential mixed with rural residential which are congruent with the request to go to the R10. Here's our future land use map. You can uh, kind of see up here towards the highway as a little bit higher uh, intensity land use classification along with everything else that we had just seen on the screen. This was found to be reasonable and in the public interest uh, because it is adjacent to similarly zoned properties and supported by for policies in our comprehensive plan. It does come to you recommended by the planning board without any citizen comments provided at that meeting on July 7th. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rue. At this time, I'll open the public hearing. We have no one signed up, but if anyone is here on behalf of Willie and Linda Bryan or Garden Street Communities who would like to approach, you're welcome to do so as the applicant. Hi, good morning, uh, Ethan Parker, 8754 Reed Drive, Emerald Isle, North Carolina. I'm here to represent the developer of Garden Street Communities, and I'd be glad to answer any questions that you may have on the rezoning application for this property. Thank you so much. I'll make one call to the audience. If there's anyone else who would like to come up, uh, who would like to speak or has questions about the Bryan rezoning, if you would approach at this time. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. It's now available for board consideration. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Um, item five, general items. Uh, I think Mr. DeSelms will present that to us. Yes. <clears throat> Good morning, Chairman Bryden, Commissioners. Um, Lisa Brown, the Onslow County Clerk of Court, has requested that the Onslow County Grand Jury Officer's compensation be increased from $30 per day to $50 per day. The Grand Jury meets once a month throughout the year, each calendar year except for the month of December. Generally, the session will last for six to eight hours each time. The Grand Jury Officer ensures that only Grand Jurors are present in the grand jury, room, grand jury room during the deliberations and voting for of the grand jury. Have a grand jury officer alleviates the need to have a deputy monitor the grand jury room and is a savings to the county. 
So it's respectfully requested that the Board of Commissioners approve an increase in the grand jury officer's compensation from $30 a day to $50 a day. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, uh, now, if y'all would, um, I just want to bring the light uh, just one item. The gentleman that currently holds that position is 82 years old and has faithfully done this position for years, saving the taxpayers of Onslow County hundreds, if not thousands of dollars throughout that time. Ms. Brown has asked for $50. If we put a deputy in that position, that's $20 an hour. That's $20 an hour that we have to pay the deputy. This fine young man has been doing it for years at 82 years old now and is only asking for $50 and they came up with that number. I respectfully ask this Board of Commissioners to increase that to $100. The man is saving us taxpayers money and all due respect to everybody involved, I think we just need to compensate that man just a little bit more. Uh, He's just barely making it now. And with the price of gas and everything else that's going up, I respectfully ask for $100 for that position. We have a, any further discussion? We have a motion and a second for the motion that's on the table. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, B, change in the register of deeds office hours. Uh, yes, yes, sir, I'll handle this one as well. In accordance with um, General Statute 161-8, the Board of County Commissioners sets the hours of each day that the Register of Deeds shall operate. Onslow County's Register of Deeds, Omega K. Jarman, has requested that the office hours that the Register of Deeds is open to the public be extended from 5 o'clock to 5.30 p.m., Extending the hours will allow an additional hour for the recording of deeds and the issuance of marriage licenses, as currently the cutoff time to do so is 4.30 p.m. It's respectfully requested that the Board of County Commissioners extend the office hours of the Register of Deeds from 5 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. And this would begin on October 3rd, which is the first Monday in October. And this would authorize, and authorize the Chairman to sign a resolution setting the new hours of operation. Motion, motion to approve. approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? This this is a this is great for any, people that don't know. Uh, a lot of a lot of people close their real estate deals late in the afternoon, and they end up having to wait. They can't move into their house until the next day because they can't get the deed recorded. This is going to be very helpful uh, to home buyers in Onslow County. It'll be a great benefit. Thank you, Miss Jarman. Uh, I ask uh, Amiga if um, are you going to have to? I'll let you get to the podium. Are you? Is this going to create a overtime status for your employees? Um, no, sir. The way this has come about is the fact that you guys have allowed the um, employees of the county to change to a flex schedule. I now have four staff members that are doing the flex schedule, which is four 10-hour days. So we'll actually be in the office until six um, each afternoon, but we're just asking that it's open to the public until 5.30. But it does not give any overtime. It doesn't change anybody's pay. Um, it's just something that is allowing us to have a later service for our citizens. Okay. Well, thank you a lot. I, mm -hmm. I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Bennett. This is a good opportunity for our real estate people to go in and uh, file deeds and uh, get, get their closings done because a lot of times it just can't happen uh, during the time frame that you're open. Yes, sir. And it does allow citizens who are wanting to get marriage license until 430. We have a lot of military that tell us they can't leave the base until 430 but they'll have the extra hour now to come in to get their marriage license. Sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah, I think it's great to, uh, sounds like you're responding to the request of the citizens and meeting their needs, which is outstanding and outstanding that the county's providing the flexible time to be able to create the ability to meet those needs. It's a win-win for everyone, Absolutely. I believe. 
Yes, sir. Thank All right. You. Well, thank you a lot. And I do I want to thank the Register of Deeds for producing the status report that you've been doing. That's a lot of valuable information to us, or to me, anyway. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I hear none. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Uh, Ms. Calloway. Good morning, Chairman, Vice Chairman, and Commissioners. As you know, Onslow County provides our health insurance through Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina, and they are our third party administrator for our insurance. We are a self-insured plan, and that means that Blue Cross provides both our claims administration for medical and pharmacy services. They also provide both our aggregate and our specific stop loss coverage. And each year at renewal time, we take a close look at the renewal agreement to make sure that we negotiate the best terms to provide the best coverage for our employees, but also the, um, the terms that are most fiscally responsible. So this year, I bring you good news. Our administrative fees for the medical and the pharmacy claims will remain the same, and those will be at $12.93 per member per month. And then because we took a really close look at the threshold amount of our stop loss coverage for specific stop loss, we can actually report to you that that coverage will go from $80.69 PM PM all the way down to $29.01 per member per month. Aggregate stop loss, on the other hand, will increase just ever so slightly from $2.37 per member per month to $2.90 per member per month. The documents that you have before you are effective this fiscal year um, and reflects the fees that I just discussed for medical and pharmacy service administration and both our specific stop loss and aggregate stop loss. It is respectfully requested that the Board of Commissioners consider approval of these agreements with Blue Cross Blue Shield for fiscal year 2022-23 for the administration of our health plan and our aggregate and specific stop loss coverages to continue providing health plan benefits to our eligible county employees and authorize the chairman to sign on behalf of the county. Motion. So we can approve. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I think this is a big savings to the to the county and to the individual members. Uh, um, yes, sir. Health costs now is just escalating, so any savings we can realize is a big benefit for the county and our employees. Yes, sir. Any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you so much. Streamflow Rehabilitation, uh, Joshua Thomas from uh, Soil and Water. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, recently, the North Carolina General Assembly appropriated $38 million to the uh, Soil and Water Districts of North <laughs> Carolina and other municipal uh, partners. Um, we have applied for that grant money. There is no in-kind or matching funds required. Uh, the purpose of this contract is to assist in protecting and restoring the integrity of drainage <laughs> infrastructure through routine maintenance to existing streams and drainage ways. This contract is funded by state appropriations provided through Session Law 2021-180, Senate Bill 195. A total of $377,335 from the North Carolina Department of Agriculture has been awarded to Onslow County uh, to complete watershed restoration activities, including cutting and removing down trees, broken treetops, uh, woody vegetative debris that impedes or has the potential to impede uh, water flow in the back swamp area. Uh, this project will clear an estimated <coughs> length of 37,733 feet, uh, depending on bids received from our local contractors. Um, it is respectfully requested by the Board of Commissioners to consider accepting the Streamflow stream Rehabilitation Program grant funds in the amount of $377,335 and to authorize the Chairman to assign the associated documents. Motion to approve. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? That's the uh, the funds that we're receiving today as a, is a direct result 
from Senator Lazar and uh, Representative Phil Shepard. Uh, I truly want to thank them for bringing the money to Onslow County. And um, there's more out there, so go after it. There, there's always more, yes, and sir. hopefully we can get some more uh, as thank time. You. We, we have a long list of creeks that need cleaning out, and we're, we're going to try to work through them. This will save us a lot in floods. Yes, sir. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. EMS cardiac monitor lease. Um, Jason Jones will present that item from uh, Emergency Management Division Head. Good morning, Chairman, Vice Chairman, and Commissioners. Um, as most of you know, North Carolina Office of EMS requires a cardiac monitor to be on every paramedic ambulance um, that operates in the state. Uh, we use these on every patient encounter. Uh, we use it for vital signs as well as delivering electrical therapy in those life threatening situations. Many of our monitors have reached the end of their useful life and we must replace them. Um, so funding in this year's budget uh, was approved by the commissioners to replace the monitors. We have a lease agreement with Stryker that will allow us to replace all of the cardiac monitors. Um, it's a five year lease for a total of $168,697.43 each year. It is respectfully requested that the board consider the lease uh, for an annual sum of $168,697.43 for five years and authorize the chairman to execute any documents necessary for the lease. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, John. Community um, Foundation, North Carolina Community Foundation, Dallas uh, Fred Allen Endowment. Uh, it'll be Stephanie Swicer, Animal Service Director. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you for your time. Um, North Carolina Community Foundation has awarded the Animal Services Department a grant in the amount of $7,310 uh, through the Dallas Fred Allen Endowment Fund, and there is no county match. Um, this is just money that we can use at our shelter to um, purchase an additional uh, cat kennels and some upgrades to our diagnostic equipment for our medical lab. And I respectfully request that the Board of Commissioners accept this grant award in the amount of $7,310 and authorize the chairman to sign any necessary documents. Motion, motion. to approve. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, <laughs> motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good morning. Budget amendments, um, Ms. Lisa Marlin. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. It's my pleasure to present to you the following budget amendments for fiscal year 22-23. Item B14 amends the animal services budget to include the grant that you just approved. And item B15 amends the tourism budget to include Fish Strong as approved by the board on August 15th. We respectfully request the Board of Commissioners approve these budget amendments, and I will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Uh, all, uh, any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. <coughs> Item H is the airport improvement. Uh, Chris White, our airport director, will present that item that we amended the agenda to add on. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you for uh, amending the agenda to take on this item. The uh, Federal Aviation Administration has the Airport Improvement Program, and they have awarded Onslow County a grant in the amount of $8,420,073 for rehabilitation of the runway 523. This project entails milling off the top layer of asphalt, replacing that, as well as some associated work for that project. It is respectfully requested the Board of Commissioners consider accepting FAA AIP 47 grant, and if approved, authorize the chairman to sign the document on behalf of the county. Motion approved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Always good to get eight and a half million dollars for airport with no matching funds. That's right. 
Um, hearing no other further discussion, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, aye. sir. Onslow Hospital Authority, uh, I'll turn that over to Ms. Griffin and Brett to present that item. Thank you so much. Um, the Onzo County Hospital Authority at its regularly scheduled meeting on July 28, 2022, voted unanimously to forward nominations for consideration for reappointment or appointment of terms on the Onzo County Hospital Authority Board, which will expire September 30th, 2022. At this time, the Onzo County Hospital Authority does not have an additional name pursuant to section seven of the joint resolution the Onzo County Hospital Authority is requesting consideration of these names for appointment or reappointment. Seat number three, Michael Royce Bennett. Seat number four, Charles A. Gibbs. Seat number eight, Carol A. Johnston, MD. Seat number nine, Curtis B. Hilt, Jr. The applications are on file and have been certified by the clerk's office. We have four specific actions requested. Our first specific action that we respectfully request is consideration of Michael Royce Bennett, seat number three for a three-year term expiring September 30th, 2025. Chairman, uh, if I would, I'd like to make a motion to table that position and then and now until after January to give the, hosp the hospital authority time to submit some more applicants or nominees for that position. In, concurrent with the resolution that both boards approved in 2017. I'm not sure I'm following this. Why do you want to extend it? I don't, I don't understand. The, the two boards agreed in 2017 in the joint resolution that they would submit more nominees if, if they request it. By just submitting the one, nom the one nominee, they're going against a resolution that's currently in good standing with this board. I guess my question would be if we get here in January and the, the hospital authority doesn't have anyone that's come forward that's interested in that, then do we hold off on it until that happens? Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to predict on how that comes around, and I think we've 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 appointed many previously. Maybe I understand what what Commissioner Scott is saying, but I think that puts us in a position that I think the authority has probably gone out and looked for well, members. Well, we have a we have a motion. So, do we have a second on that motion? What's what's the motion again? To approve a motion to, to table. To table. Move to table. Oh. Well, I still have a question. I, maybe, maybe I'm just not comprehending. Yes, right? we got to. A, I didn't drink my coffee this morning, but I, I still don't understand why we're tabling this. It's supposed to give an extra name, is what Scott's saying. Okay. It's supposed to be an extra name by the, by what happened. Uh, so we don't have we don't have a second extra to name the to go along with Mr. Bennett's name is what what Scott's asking. So we don't have a second to the motion, so the motion dies. So now. We move forward with the appointment process. Motion do to approve. ballots or we, do we need a motion to approve then? Yeah. So move. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? We're going to do all of these at one time? No, sir. We're going to do them individually. Okay. So what what the motion would now be is to approve Michael Royce Bennett seat number three for a three-year term expiring September 30th, 2025, and it has been seconded, so it can be discussed. Do we have ballots? No, there's no need for ballots. We don't need ballots because there's okay. only one for each seat. Okay, we have a motion and a, uh, for appointment of Royce Bennett. So moved. You already made the motion. Right. Second. Yeah. You need the vote. Call no, the vote. Yeah, was, All in favor of the motion, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Hey. <laughs> okay. Six to one. Okay. Next. Okay. Part. Our second specific action requested is your consideration of Charles A. Gibbs, seat number four, for a three-year term expiring September 30th, 2025. 
Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Um, our, our third on. action, we respectfully request consideration of Carol A. Johnston, seat number eight for a three-year term expiring September 30th, 2025. So moved. Second. second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. And the final action on this appointment item, um, consideration of Curtis B. Hild, Jr., seat number nine, for a three-year term expiring September 30th, 2025. So moved. Second. It's good. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Uh, we have, and I know it's difficult to get uh, applicants. I think the applicants come through us. We haven't had any. They, uh, they advertise the advertise. They, uh, the hospital, that's, that's correct. The hospital advertises and we advertise and when we don't get applicants, we, we don't want to hold up the board action because we don't have seated members out there. And the hospital is really critical to Onslow County that we have uh, board members set on those seats. Airport Advisory Commission, uh, Ms. Griffin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. The Airport Advisory Commission is comprised of seven members and one commissioner liaison with the mission of advising the airport director and the board of commissioners on issues related to the operation and development of Albert J. Airport, uh, excuse me, Albert J. Ellis Airport, which is part of Onslow County. The following individuals have expressed an interest in appointment. Mr. Jack Wilcox in the stump sound category term expiring September 30th, 2025. Mr. Wayne Mixon, the Swansboro category, term expiring September 30th, 2025. Mr. Elbert Garvey, the at-large category, term expiring September 30th, 2025. All of these applications are on file, have been certified by the clerk's office. We do respectfully request that the Board of Commissioners consider the appointment of Mr. Wilcox, Mr. Mixon, and Mr. Garvey to the named categories for a three-year three term expiring September 30th, 2025. Motion approved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda, we didn't have anything moved from the front uh, <laughs> to the back. Uh, we now at item number eight, uh, manager's comments. Ms. Griffin. Yes, I would. Um, I do have a couple of comments. I'd like to thank Ms. Vanek for her comments, and um, we will speak with Parks and Recreation and see if we can encourage some of the more regional events. Um, I believe that the reason why Onslow Pines is often the site of the larger events is because it's more central to all areas of the county. So, for example, when we have something 4th of July, we don't want it to be way on the Swansboro side so that folks uh, that live in Sneeds Ferry have a long drive or vice versa. So, um, but we, we can always take a, another look at that and make sure that we are having as many activities as we, as we can afford to have for sure and for families. The other thing I would say today is we are, of course, this time of year watching the tropics. Um, we do not expect any direct impacts at all from Hurricane Earl. I did get an advisory this morning from um, our emergency managers, though, that we do expect severe rip currents on our coast due to Hurricane Earl passing by in the Atlantic, um, fortunately offshore quite a bit. But we really encourage people to be uh, very thoughtful about their time in the water when we have severe rip currents and to please observe warning signs as they consider going into the ocean. Um, we are always watching, of course, and there is another tropical disturbance out in the Atlantic that we're keeping our eyes on. I would also like to announce that the North Carolina Department of Transportation is continuing to try to um, repair the bridge on Bel Belgrade Swansboro Road. This is not a county project. This is a North Carolina Department of Transportation. They had hoped to have it reopened by now, but they are having material delays and are unable to finish the project. So they have released another advisory today saying that it will be a few more weeks. 
So Belgrade Swansboro Road, of course, is still um, closed. If you have questions, North Carolina DOT has a website. It is drivenc.gov that has advisories about this. They also have, they reference their Twitter account and suggest that you follow their Twitter account. Um, and that's all I have today, unless you have questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we are now at commissioner comments, and I will start with, let's see, last time I started on this side, so this time I'll start with Commissioner Scott. Okay, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I just want to mention briefly the incident that happened at one is one of our schools. My condolences and, and everybody involved, I'm truly sorry. Um, but I assure you, it's not going un, 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 unnoticed. Um, it's a tragedy, and that's all I can really say about it. Uh, the actions that this board took today, uh, I, I, I feel strongly about a resolution whenever it's adopted by this board. And I'm paying respect to the board members that adopted that uh, re uh, the resolution in question. Have nothing but respect for everybody on this board. And we work together. The vote's been made. Go to hear nothing else about it from me. I hope y'all have a good afternoon and God bless you and be safe. Thank you, Commissioner Price. Yeah, I'd like to thank the SROs who responded at uh, Northside High School to the incident and uh, to the staff and, and all the actions that were taken there and Principal uh, Staley and uh, his staff for uh, dealing with that as, as best way possible. Uh, other than that, thank you for coming and had a good, have a good afternoon. Thank you. I'll now move to uh, Commissioner Bennett on the, uh, my far right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do send my condolences to the Northside High School, um, but if you weren't aware of it, on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, uh, the Liberty Christian School uh, sponsored an event where I, I was out there at 9 o'clock Saturday morning, and, and literally hundreds of students came out from all over Onslow County to, uh, to write um, encouraging messages on the sidewalks at Northside um, high school it was it was a very moving time and i appreciate liberty christian school for thinking about their colleagues at Northside high school i don't i don't know if anybody got to see it because i think it rained and probably washed it all away before anybody had a chance to see it but it was very moving uh saturday morning um also want to mention if you didn't make it to holly ridge's liberty festival um on, on the, over the weekend, the 9-11 museum, mobile museum was there for, with tunnels to towers, and that was a very, uh, very nice display. I appreciate the town of Holly Ridge sponsoring that event. And one other thing, the, uh, there's a first responders dinner on September the 11th on Sunday at 5.30 at the Swansboro Rotary Civic Center. All first responders are, ex are invited to dinner on Sunday. September the 11th at 5.30 at Swansboro Rotary Civic Center. And that event, as I understand, is sponsored by the Sheriff's Office, uh, by the DA's Office, the Swansboro Mayor, the Hubert Volunteer Fire Department, and Tunnels to Towers. So um, I appreciate everybody being here today and hope you have a good day. Thank you. Commissioner Buchanan. Thank you. I don't have a whole lot to say, but one thing I want to say, these boards that we have, we have a hard time finding citizens that go down our boards. I mean, I sit on the fire rescue board and I sit on some other boards and it's hard to find people. The airport board, we had a hard time and Foster was looking hard to find somebody to sit on that board. We have a lot of citizens that we talk to and sometimes they just don't have the time to do that. So it's hard to find people to put on these boards. So if anybody's out there wanting to volunteer to a board, let us know. Uh, it's just hard for us to find people. And I've been dealing with this for all the years I've been sitting as a commissioner. And it's just very important if the citizens want to help us, Give us your name and we'll see where we can put you on a board. It's just hard to fill these boards. And that's all I want to say. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Commissioner Knapp. <clears throat> I just want to kind of piggyback on uh, what happened at Northside. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that disturbed me was not necessarily the incident itself, but the comments that some people were making on social media, you know, forgetting the fact that we had a child that was killed. Um, you know, there's a situation there that will be addressed 
Um, it's an unfortunate accident, or excuse me, unfortunate incident, and I, and I pray for the family members of all those involved. Um, again, it's really unfortunate when one of our children uh, lives are taken from us, and, uh, and I worry about the parents of all those involved. And so when I read social media and some people pointing fingers at this and that, you know, it, it, it actually disgusts me that people would do that, take into account that a mother lost a child, period. And we need to be sympathetic and show more compassion to that side. Um, and I wish some people would learn that when they're on social media by instead of pointing fingers and blaming the BOE or the Sheriff's Department. I'll tell you what, the BOE has done a remarkable job with our schools. And the Sheriff's Office and the PD and the EMT people who responded, they, you couldn't have asked for anything better. Um, they were there, they were on the scene. And we have to keep in mind that, you know, with, with this tragic incident brought to us, that we had a death of a child, period. I don't know any details of the person's name, and I'm not going to get into it, and I know nothing about the family or anything else. All I know is there was a death of a child in our schools, and it's a very unfortunate accident. So when you're out there reading some of this stuff that some people cruelly put on social media, you know, put them in check or ignore them because it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. They've lost their focus. They lost their focus on, you know, they want to immediately point their fingers at whoever's to blame for it. There's plenty of time to do that later. You know, right now it's time to remember the child that lost his life and it's time to uh, show compassion and um, say a prayer or a moment of silence for whatever, whatever you prefer. But that, that's what I wanted to say about that because um, it really bothered me that, that people can be nasty, very nasty. But again, God bless the family. I pray for them. Um, I can't commend the BOE, uh, what they're going through. And they're continuing to go through right now. They've, you know, they're in a process right now, a board of education members, uh, of losing two, uh, two members off the board. And uh, now we have to find two replacements. And that's going to be a tedious assignment. It's going to take some thought-provoking uh, thoughts from people as to who they want to, to uh, as far as the Republican Executive Committee, who they want to be uh, in those spots. So. The BOE has suffered a lot lately, and, and uh, I just want to applaud them, Barry and his staff, um, and then Bob Williams, the chairman of the Board of Education, for doing a remarkable job on, and, and just for standing tall and, and standing firm together. So I applaud them tremendously. And I applaud our um, county manager once again and our staff. You know, it, it dawned on me this last week, Every time I call Sharon or call the office, all the issues that are coming up, all the little things that seem trivial to some people are big things for the county government. And all the stuff that takes time to research, some of the frivolous questions, some of the frivolous you know, uh, comments that they research day in and day out, not just her, but the rest of the staff. And it amazes me you know, that number one, Sharon still has her hair and it's sort of a lot of members in the staff because every day when we call in, and, I, and Sharon can attest to this, there's something. Either this citizen complained about this, this citizen's not happy about that, or you know something really small, small to us but big to them. So if it's big to them, it's now big to us and we have to try to find some type of resolution. So I commend you for everything that you guys have done and continue to do. And the last thing I'm gonna say is what a heck of a week for college football. That's all I got to say. I mean, if you didn't watch any of the football games, you have lost your mind. I mean, UNC barely pulls off a win. NC State barely pulls off a win. And I got to admit, my Florida State Seminoles blocked an extra point and won the game. So I'm, I was a happy camper, trust me. I had three heart attacks during that game, but I was a happy camper. <coughs> so anyway. I look forward to the rest of the uh, college football season, and I uh, hope you all have a great day, and thanks for coming out. Thank you, Commissioner. Vice Chairman. Well, it's good that uh, Carolina football made that three-pointer at the buzzer to, uh, <laughs> to win that 63-61 football game. I'm not sure if they played any defense. Um, having just retired as a principalship in Onslow County Schools, my obviously – the worst nightmare of anybody walking into a school building is what took place on that, that day. Because um, our first priority every day we walk in those doors is, is to ensure the safety of those kids. So m m my heart goes out to the families because no one's day starts off 
with that in mind. And hearts and thoughts and prayers to Mr. Staley and the, and the admin and students and teachers at, at Northside High School. Um, something that we, we hope and prayed would never come to the doorstep of Onslow County, but it's here. And we just got to be in support of those families and support of those teachers and educators on that campus. Mm -hmm. um, that's, just, that's just the bottom line. Um, the other part is I'd love for uh, our folks in Raleigh to find a means to support or come in and help with something with these subdivisions that are facing uh, the deterioration of their roads. We've been working with a few subdivisions as best we can to come to a, a means of supporting them and the money that is required is, 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 is up there. So maybe we can get some, some support coming out of Raleigh in the, in the future for those, those folks. And the last thing that I, I want to share is I've gotten quite a few phone calls on the dumping of cats um, on the road in the Sneeds Ferry area. There's no excuse for that. There's plenty of, of places in Onslow County to take those animals, whether it's to our, our, um, our animal control here. There's plenty of, of adoption and rescue places in Onslow County. Um, folks, have a heart. Take those animals someplace else and, and quit, quit putting them on the roadside and creating issues out there. Um, that's, that's, that's a humanitarian thing, too, for animals, to, to just don't do that. Um, other than that, I appreciate everybody coming out today, and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. I want to uh, congratulate the uh, hospital authority members that put their name on the line and signed back up to be reappointed. Um, I did... Um, at uh, Commissioner Scott's idea about the resolution. I did confer with our legal department about that, and the legal uh, advice on that is we could, we could uh, when we didn't have uh, any applicants, we could move forward with the appointment if the board chooses to. So that was the reason that we went ahead and put it on the agenda to uh, reappoint those persons and appoint the person that vacated the seat. So congratulations to all the people that got appointed. Uh, as far as the uh, belgrade Swansboro Road, the uh, closing of that road has been a long time. I'm glad that the Department of Transportation is moving. That is a farming community, and you got somebody with a $250,000 piece of equipment that's doing farming operation, and they having to move that equipment 25 miles around to get on the other side of the obstruction to get to their farm operation. You can imagine what the farmers are going through now out in that area because uh, now is harvesting season. And um, I would uh, suggest to the people that's on Highway 24 and Highway 58 to be patient with those people that's running those combines uh, back and forth to their farming operation that they're having to uh, take the detour. Um, starting November 1st, uh, the North Carolina um, Department of North Carolina Law and, uh, Inspections for uh, Automobiles, they will now, EPA has now done away with the um, emissions part of that beginning November 1st. Still have to get an inspection, but you don't have to comply with the emissions part. So instead of spending 30 some dollars for an inspection, I think it'd only be like nine, nine or ten dollars now. Yes. Um, the one last thing I'd like to say is uh, my condol condolences goes out to the family of the North Side uh, stabbing incident where the person lost her life. And one more thing, I'd like to say my condolences goes out to Jay King and Jay King's sister, Omega King Jarman. Jay was a inspiration to Onslow County. He was involved in everything from community service to public service to, and that was his whole life. And uh, he, he succumbed to an uh, illness that we don't really, I haven't found out what it was, but still, uh, Jay King will be missed in the community. Jay King will be missed in the state of North Carolina and he will be missed by me and the things that I was doing and he helped me with every time we had situation. He was out there front line raising money for families that lost their, uh, property and fires uh, with cancer survivor, with surgeries and stuff like that, Jay will be missed. Uh, and I, I really uh, I hope that people will realize what he done for Oslo County. And he's born and raised here. And 
he was uh, a JPD officer. I trained him when he first got on, and then he, he decided to leave the department and go with the state patrol, and he stayed there until he retired and come back, got on the sheriff's department and stayed there, public service, and then still doing his fundraising and stuff like that and helping his mama. He always uh, helped his family. So with that, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.